And the Fighting Illini of the University of Illinois opened the 1985 Big Ten season. Today's game is being brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers. Reach for that distinctive, clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do, this Bud's for you. And by the Illinois State Lottery. A lot of people have already won millions playing lotto. You could be next. Hello, I'm Will Team with Jim Grabowski. And Jim, you hate to say that an early season game could set the whole tempo for the campaign, but this one could be it. Well, there's no doubt about it, the importance of this football game. Number one, it's a Big Ten game, which is always important. But number two, Illinois, it's so important for them to win today or play a good ball game. They've had such high hopes. They've been a disappointment so far this year. They need to play a good game emotionally for their outlook for the rest of the year. And we'll be back with more in just a moment. These two teams, since Coach Mike White has been in Illinois and Coach Earl Bruce Ohio State, Jim, have had some unbelievable games. Well, well, I think I've seen two of the greatest individual performance in colleges over the last six years of Illinois-Ohio State football. Dave Wilson, several years ago, passed for 621 yards, and last year, Keith Byers rushed for 274 yards. They've been great football games in the last six years. I hope we have another one. Bottom line, to believe you can win, you must first win. And I think the line of favorite, that's Keith Jones. Has it at about the five. Nice move by Jones, and Illinois takes over in good field position at the 34-yard line. A real mistake by the outside man, the coverage team of Ohio State. He took Keith Jones, moved to the inside, and left Jones an open alley down the right side of the field. Well, a lot of people have wondered, are the Illini the players, not the coaches, but are the players ready to play? And it looks like we may have seen something. Well, Jack Trudeau comes in, a man who is still looking to find the stride this year, but total offense, he's 13th in the country. Thomas Brooks would love to duplicate last year's effort of 168 yards against the Buckeyes. And Eric Wyckoff, the other running back, is hurt, but playing and starting. First down and 10. Trudeau wastes no time. People have been waiting for Jack Trudeau to show signs of versatility and leadership. And there is no reason why two weeks ago he wouldn't have been down. But this time he gets past everybody but their best tackler of the Buckeyes, that being Johnson. He did a fine job of avoiding a couple tackles. There's good pressure on Jack, but he managed to slip those tackles, pick up uh, nine yards. David Williams, a split end, as you see there, will be setting more records today. And, of course, Cap Ozo, the tight end, has been the top touchdown catcher so far this season for Illinois. And down second down in short yardage, it's Thomas Rooks who gets the call. A little draw play, Will, and uh, Eric Kumarol, the left defensive end, read it well, made the stop. Number 14, Eric the offensive line is a group that I'm sure would like to redeem themselves somewhat. They've settled down. They've had some injuries. They've had some changes. And a lot of people don't realize this, Jim, but they have been working extra after practice without the coaches to try to get their assignments down. And I think now that they're settled, this group might prove something before this afternoon is over. It is third down and short. The Illini are ready and marching. They have a first down as they march towards the 50-yard line. Ray Wilson's on the carry, and Byron Lee is on the stop for the Buckeyes. Almost a disaster. Jack uh, Trudeau, as he was dropping back from the center to make the handoff, almost slipped and fell. This defensive line of Ohio State is virtually brand new. And the interesting thing is number 14, Eric Comaro, was an all-state quarterback out of Illinois when he was in high school. He was going to be a superstar quarterback. As a sophomore, he's becoming a great defensive linebacker. Trudeau in the air. Jack Trudeau has got to be talking to himself because the pass was there. It's ricocheted, and that time, Chris Spielman almost caught it. Almost picked off by Spielman. As you said, the ball was there right on the numbers to Cap Bozo. He should have caught it. The linebacking core is probably the strength. They're all seniors, and they're all good. And Pepper Johnson has been the top tackler for some time for the Buckeyes. A year ago, he had 147 stops. The second best on Ohio State only had 75. Ray Wilson up the middle. Chris Spielman makes a stop. Spielman had a great Rose Bowl game last year. Had 12 solo tackles, three assists. That led everybody in that department. And, of course, his brother is a linebacker for Southern Illinois, a fellow that we saw way too much of a few weeks ago. Good job by Spielman to fill in that hole. 
On third and down, these defensive backs known as the four Smurfs because they're so short might get their first test. And they are young. They're sophomores and juniors, but they've all been together at least one full season. On third and nine, Trudeau has his first long yardage situation. Cap Bozo comes up with another key reception. This man has been a storybook. He came in to the fall practice, not a starter. He now has more touchdown receptions than anybody on this team, and he keeps coming up with a big play. Now watch Jack, he does a fine job. He saw the pressure, but he hung in, waited for his receiver to, to break open, hits Bozo on the numbers. Jack, who has been much maligned, came up with a good play there. Well, it's now first and 10. 12.25 to go in the first quarter. This is the first offensive possession for either team. Illinois is looking like the Illinois of old so far. Trudeau again is back to pass. Williams cannot hang on. The fans are screaming for pass interference, but I think it was just a fine play by Steve Hill. No, I'll tell you what it is, Will. He did hang on. It looked like the ball was jarred loose, but he's, as he was falling to the ground, the ball popped back into his hands. Good job by David Williams. Well, David Williams will move up on the all-time NCAA record list before this day is over. We figured he can get as high as probably six if he has his regular day of catching. He's now tied himself for seven. Wyckoff. Well, Jim, we've seen Illinois now for a handful of plays. They look like a different football team. They certainly have come out with the intensity we talked about. They are fired up. They want to prove themselves today, and so far they are. Now, here's the play. You'll see Scott Keyhole coming through the hole. Wyckoff cutting it up. Now, watch. He, the ball is jarred loose right there, but the Illini come up with it. But a real serious problem right now. Jim Jurica is being helped off, and we just talked moments ago about the fact the Illinois offensive line has just sort of got itself back together. And Jurika, one of the top members of this whole group, he's a senior, he started a tackle, they moved him to guard. I don't think you lo like losing a three-time uh, letter winner right away. Well, and he was expected to be an All-American candidate this year. He is a fine offensive guard. As he was a tackle the past two years, has done a good job at guard so far this year, and he's going to be missed greatly in this game. It is second down and five. In his place is Mark McGowan, a 6'4", 255 sophomore. Ball resting on the Ohio State 17. It's a reverse coming up. Williams has it. He's got two blockers in front of him. Nose dives at the eight. A first down for Illinois. Well, they're not holding back anything. This is the first occasion this year that David Williams has run the football, and he picks up a key first down. Here you'll see it pitch out to Keith Jones, hands back to David Williams, and Williams does a good job of running the football. Watch this move right here. He cuts it back in, now outside, slips that tackle. Hey, he could be a running back. <laughs> First and goal to go from the nine-yard line. David Williams, good stats for an offense that has yet to find its way in 85. Rooks. Rooks inside the five, down to the three. White makes a stop. He also had to melt that time from a pretty good man, Fred Ryder. Well, we don't want to speak too soon, but by far the best offensive showing we've seen of the Illini this year. Pitch out to Thomas Rooks, toss pitch, takes it in, now out. Good mother. Well, he slips the tackle of Spielman right there, picks up an extra two yards. When I had a chance to talk with offensive coordinator Bob Gamble this week, I basically asked him uh, what really the bottom line was, and he said, we just have to do what we can do, and, and it's that simple. It is second down a goal to go. It's on the four. Long count by Trudeau. Rooks the hard way to the one. These are awfully tough yards when you get down inside the five, Will. Chris Spielman makes a stop for Ohio State. He's coming off some injuries himself. Well, Thomas Rooks, he's been a man who's had one good game so far statistically. That was the opener against Southern Cal. Came up with 137 yards, and I'm sure if he could just get one, he'd be happy right now. Well, the fans are sure ready at Memorial Stadium. Wilson. They're going to unstack this one. 
He's going to end up short, Will, about a half a yard short. The team wants to go for it, but the only decision that counts is Mike White's, and they're going to go for it. Into the game with the play is Keith Jones. Jones goes in, Rooks goes out. So if you take out your best ball carrier, does that mean you throw the ball? Well, Keith Jones is a big, strong guy, but I would expect to see the ball in the air, some kind of play action. The running backs behind Trudeau are Wilson now and Keith Jones. It's a pitch to Jones. It's, well, I don't know. They call it a touchdown. Keith Jones. That little extra effort, Will, got him the six. Seventy-three thousand orange pom-poms going crazy at Memorial Stadium. Here it is. We'll see the toss pitch now back to Jones. He looks outside first. Now he lowers his shoulder and he's going for it. Looks like he stopped. Now you'll see his shoulders just sneak through for the six. Close call. Well, then only has to get there, right? That's right. Cross the goal line. Chris White in to attempt the point after. a 7-0 football game right now. 9.07 to go in this first quarter of play, and Illinois now leads Ohio State 7-0, and what we have seen is an Illinois football team that can play offense. As I said, a best offense of showing consistent against a good football team we've seen to date this year. In terms of the way it went, statistically, Trudeau threw the ball three times, two completions in that drive for 31 yards. Wyckoff had the most yardage in the run. He had, in the drive, he had four carries for nine yards. And basically, Jones ices it off in a couple key catches by Bozo and Williams. And when it all said and said and done, you have a lot of people in a well-rounded offensive drive. There you see it, not too bad. 13 plays, about six minutes, a long way to go. A lot of run, a lot of pass. It's the way you like to play offense. It certainly is, Will. You have a good balanced attack. Of course, it was the passing that got you there, but good 37 yards rushing. That makes that team aware that they can run the football. By the way, when Chris White got that point after, that moved him past Dan Beaver. He is now the second all-time leading scorer in Illinois history. He's at 199 points. The man left for him to catch is Mike Bass at 209. It'd be nice to see him go crazy and to top that today. By the way, just for, for you trivia fans out there, whenever the Illini have scored first, their record is 21-8-1. So the odds are now in our favor, just that fast. <laughs> Chris White to kick off. Workman and Ross back deep. Workman smart enough to not bring it out. So the Buckeyes will take over, first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. And I got a hunch we're going to see some offense from these fellows as well. As we said, Will, traditionally Ohio State is a great tailback offense, but to date they have thrown the football much more than they've ever had in the past. Carsotas coming into this ball game has about a 68% completion record, and we expect that we'll see that ball in the air by Ohio State, too. Carsotas has never lost as a starter. He's 3-0 this year, and he's... 3-0 uh, coming into the year as a backup to Tom Zack when Tom Zack was there. Cooper, sophomore fullback, finding his way, and Johnny Woldridge. Back-to-back 100-yard -back games, filling in for Keith Byers. Bootleg pass. Not a bad play as Ed Taggart brings it in for Ohio State. Little razzle-dazzle, and it's a first down. Bootleg play by Carsotas. He got to the outside clean. He could have run the football, but saw Taggart break in the open. Took the easy way out, and there's a first down, or close to a first down. But a flag is on the play. It's going to go against Ohio State. The receivers that we were uh, showing you there for Ohio State, that is really about the three that you will see catch the ball today. Taggart is awfully good, as you'll see in this replay, Jim. He's got good hands. Now, that's what's called a waggle play. You play action one way, like bootleg, and look at Taggart breaking all wide open right there. But it doesn't count. About the only people the Buckeyes rotate offensively are the tight ends. That's Ed Taggart and John Hutchinson. It is now second down and 14. The ball is resting at the 16-yard line in Buckeye territory. Jim Corsados brings him out. Their offense looks a little bit like Southern Cows. That's Woldridge. Johnny Woldridge gets them just about back to where they were before the penalty before 
Craig Swope catches up with him. Aldridge has been quite a guy. There's a fellow that seems to have a few more gray hairs, I think, than he had a few weeks ago. Coach Mike White. Well, Woolridge is coming back from two back-to-back 100-yard -back days. Uh, they miss Keith Byers, but Woolridge is a heck of a substitute. The Buckeye offensive line, with the exception of Roy Graves, is all new. They have rebuilt that offensive line, and it has really been something. It is now first down and 10. The ball resting at the 30. Garcados, a lot of time, going deep. Overthrows Chris Carter. Carter was there, step for step with African Grant, but he had the step. Carsotas had all kinds of time to throw the football. Great protection given to him by that offensive line. Jim Carsado says, Jim mentioned, has really been an outstanding player this year for the Buckeyes. And defensively, well, these guys here really, I think, would like to prove something today, too, because they have been maligned somewhat statistically anyway by the critics. But the amazing thing about these guys, when you have Gibson and Davis, they go 6'4 and 6'5 into the 250s. You have Tiefen Tiller and Blondell at 6'3", 270, and 6'3", and 260, and they're outmanned by Ohio State. Can you believe it? Ohio State's tackles each weigh 280 pounds. Aren't you glad you're done playing? That's for sure. <laughs> it is second down and 10 for the Buckeyes. Jim Corsados to Woodridge. No go. So a good defensive job by the whole Illini front four. They each filled certain gaps. Woolridge had looked for a cutback to the left, couldn't find anything except blue jerseys. The linebacking core of the Illini, Sebring, Taggart, and Gleamy. They're all seniors. They've got to have a good game today. It's just that simple. They've got to be on top of it. It is now third down and eight. The ball is at the 33-yard line for Ohio State. This will be the first third down situation here for the Buckeyes so far today. Their tendency has to bend to throw when they've had to have critical yardage throughout the season. <laughs> Carter has it, and they say he did not trap it. So Chris Carter, this ball club's top receiver, brings it in, and on the first third down conversion situation, the Buckeyes convert. He is their main man in the pass offense. Chris Carter caught 41 receptions last year. To date, he's got 16. The one thing about these defensive backs for Lion Eye, they will probably see much more pass than run today. And right now, they do have an honor of being the second best pass defense in the Big Ten, 12th best in the country. But they'll probably get their first real test today. It's Woldridge on the pitch. Cannot turn the corner. What a job by Smoke. He would not let him get outside. And believe, believe me, Woldridge is not a slow character. Good job, Will, all along the defensive line. Again, they stretched out that sweep. And Craig Swope came up at good force, made the tackle. Well, it's second down and eight. Clock running at 7.03 in the first quarter. If you've just joined us, Illinois got the opening kickoff and marches 67 yards for the score. And Chris White's point after to make it 7-0. This marks the first drive of the Buckeyes. It began on their own 20. They're now at midfield. Second down and eight. Well, Carsados just couldn't get out that time. It was Guy Tiefatiller who made the tackle and put the pressure on Carsados to drove him out of the tech. Good bull rush by Guy Tiefatiller. I say bull rush. That's mean when you don't put a move on, you just force your guard back into the quarterback. You know, Jim, you've been in situations as a player at college, in college and in the pros, where sometimes you just have to reach from within. And you think maybe the Illinois football team is just ready to play football? I think they better be today. <laughs> third and ten. This will be the second time the Buckeyes have had a third down attempt conversion. Well, that almost was going the other way. Todd Avery was closer than Chris Carter. So it's fourth and 10. The Buckeyes have to punt. Well, you see the pom-poms. 73,000 pom-poms were given away today. So it's a sea of orange out here in Champaign. Tom Tupa to punt. He's one of the best punters in the country. Last year, he was the best net return punter in the country. He's right now averaging some 47 yards a kick. He is a good one. He's also the backup quarterback. 
He has the wind to his back. It's a wobbler. There'll be no return on this. As it goes into the end zone, and Illinois will have it first and 10 at their own 20. It's funny, you mentioned the pom-poms. Those pom-poms came courtesy of a local radio station, WQIO. They were here distributing those 72,000 pom-poms early this morning, and they did quite a job. We'll be back with more in just a moment. yard line back to pass Jack Trudeau by the time Ray Wilson on the receiving end so it looks like Illinois is going back to those nice short percentage passes that it really has become known for over the years Mike White's offense has been noted for that short control passing game and as you said well they're going back now Jack looks right looks right now he goes back to maybe his third receiver Ray Wilson short gain but it was a reception 540 remaining in the first quarter. Second down and seven. Wilson got off a close to the first down. By well, the way, the Illini are mixing up the offense right now. It's hard for Ohio State to really center in any one thing they're doing. They are doing a good job of running and passing the football. That time, Ray Wilson, the play was designed to go outside. He saw the opening back in. He loaded his shoulder, and he picks up six, seven yards, close to a first down. Ray Wilson is getting his best work out of the season so far. Third down and one. Jack Trudeau. David Williams. Midfield. First down, Illini. Well, they are doing a job of mixing it up. There's a little sweep action to the left, and it's a keeper. It's a bootleg by Jack and again under pressure now you watch fakes the handoff here to Rooks rolls it back out to the right side pressure right there but he stays with his receiver hits David Williams for a big big gain that's it David get out of bounds don't take a lick those are his stats for the year to date when he catches it it's usually worth a lot first down and 10 to midfield the Illinois looks sharp offensively it's a draw play Rooks Rooks gets six. Great value of the draw play. When you expect pass, you run it with the draw. Usually picks up pretty decent yardage. Even when it doesn't, it makes that team aware of the draw. It does slow down the pass rush. Well, on second down and five, so far this will be the sixth second down situation Illinois had on the previous five. Everyone has been a run. Since we're mixing it up, let's see if they mix this one up. Nope. Ray Wilson. It works though. Hey, if it fixes, if it works, don't fix it, right? Just short of the first down, maybe by a yard, as Pepper Johnson makes a stop for Ohio State. You know, another aspect of this Illinois offense has been a line in the maligned in the first three ball games, the offensive line. To date in these two drives, they've done the job. There has been holes out there for those running backs to hit. Now third down and one, the ball just shy of the 40-yard line. you don't see much quarterback sneak with Jack Trudeau and it's a first down for Illinois I have this funny feeling we're going to see every play in the Illini playbook today well they went right over Jim Jariga who is back in the football game there you'll see it now quarterback sneak right over the right guard 71 Jariga kind of spilling out to get the linebacker just got a piece of him all he needed to get the first down Spielman from Ohio State's probably saying a guy with those kind of statistics what's he doing running the ball on third down <laughs> it's a first and ten Illinois just looked awfully good so far I think that one was deflected Jack and Keith Jones read the key it was a blitz Jones looked like he should have picked him up but that was the key you just go through the line turn right away look for the ball it was deflected not a reception but at least they were alert to read the keys well, so far, right, uh, passing-wise, Trudeau is four out of six for some 56 yards, so the percentages are in his favor right now as the whole Illinois offense seems to be running at full speed. 3-14 to go in this first quarter. Illinois leading Ohio State in this Big Ten opener by a score of 7 to nothing. Nice 
draw play with Rooks. It's another Illinois first down. What a smooth piece of ball handling before Terry White makes a stop for the Buckeyes. Here we see it now. Just a quick setup by the offensive line. Jerica coming and trapping out. And Thomas Rooks now being led by Jim Jerica. He's looking for somebody. Hit somebody, Jim. He does. Good first down. Ohio State is trying to do something nobody has done for quite a long time, and that's defend a Big Ten title. The last time anybody won back-to-back -back crowns was back in 65 and 66 outright championships. That's when Duffy Doherty's Michigan State Club did it. Cap Bozo keeps his Illinois team going with that reception down to about the 24-yard line. William White makes a stop that time with help from Pepper Johnson. And it looks like Cap Bozo is down. The trainers are out there looking at him. He took a heck of a hit. That's Bozo's second reception. The most important Cap Bozo has been the big play man. Here we see it again, Jack. Quick, just a straight drop back. He looked like he's going to Bozo all the way. A little turnout by Bozo, and watch that hit. Front and back. Ouch. Hopefully that's all it is, is the wind was knocked out of him. This telecast is authorized under rights granted by the Athletic Association of the University of Illinois and the University of Ohio State. Any rebroadcast or other reproduction of the description and the accounts of this game without the express written permission of the Athletic Association of the University of Illinois is strictly prohibited. It is second down and five. The ball resting on the 22-yard line. A shuttle pass to Rooks. Look out. Down close to his goal line. Down to the one. Is it a pass or is it a lateral? That's a pass. That's a forward pass. The forward pass doesn't have to be over the shoulder. It's a pitch, but it's a pass. Watch it. Here it is. Famous shuttle pass. I'll tell you, Illinois isn't holding anything back. <laughs> shuttle there to Thomas Rooks. Boy, he's starting to smell the goal line now. Look at him turning on. Breaks that one. Now get to it, Thomas. Get to it. Almost yard short. By the way, that was the longest pass completion of the day. <laughs> and most of it on the run. By the way, with that completion, Jack Trudeau has now passed Tony Eason on the all-time completion list at the University of Illinois. So I don't know if that's the fitting pass to break such a record, huh? Storybook wise. Touchdown. Ray Wilson puts the line eye up 13 nothing. Good job by Ray Wilson of just dipping it to the outside. Here you will see it. The hole should be inside, but he takes it out, and it's another six. Ray Wilson picks up his first score of the campaign. At what point of the game do you think Mike White might smile? <laughs> when it's over. Chris White in to attempt the point after. He's one for one today in point afters. This comes in to give him a 14-zip lead. Snap is back. Looks good from here. It is. And a 2.15 to go in this first quarter. All of a sudden, the Illini have taken charge of the game. And it's now a 14-0 lead over Ohio State. And I am not sure, but I think this is the biggest deficit the Buckeyes have had all year. As Ohio State takes possession, the first quarter came to an end with a score. Illinois 14 and Ohio State in quarter play. 14-0, Illini leading Ohio State. The Buckeyes are on the march. That's Cooper, their fullback. And he's down to about the 12-yard line. So Ohio State, who has played good offense this season, is now beginning to flex its muscle. Shows you that strength of the offensive line. The backside had a good job. What do those stats tell you much, Jim? Really, uh, this looks like oh, Illinois just played well-rounded football and pretty much had, had their way. I think that the key there is that you'll see a good spread between the Illini rushing and throwing the football. It's been a good first quarter. First down and 10. The ball now on the 13-yard line in Illinois territory. Woldridge down to about the 11. Jim Blondell makes a stop for Illinois. Going to bring up second down. 
defensively at this stage of the game, do you see Illinois doing anything different? No, they're playing their basic defense. Again, usually man-on-man -man in the secondary. Nothing unusual. Well, the play is in from the sideline. Let's see what Earl Bruce has sent in. Cooper and Woolridge are the running backs in the eye formation by Jim Forsados. That's Woolridge. Down to about the four. They have to get to the three for the first down. Rondell and Swope on the stop. Give credit again to the offensive line of Ohio State. Down at this end of the field, you don't expect big holes. You'll see one here, just a little crack. All you need for a guy like Woolridge breaks right through. Little hand tack, arm tackling there. You got to hit him with the shoulders. Lenice is leaving the game. Another tight end. Jim Carroll is coming in. So it's three tight ends. As you can see it, it's third and short. Barsados is going to be close. I believe he has it, Will. That's the option play. You don't see much of that from Ohio State anymore. Quarterback keep kept it on that, Carsados, and I think he's got it. Rob Gleamy made the stop that time for Illinois. He appears like he has it. Here we'll see it. He fakes the pitch, now cuts it back inside. Decent job by Gleamy, but not enough. It's a first down. Well, the Buckeyes have about a short three yards to go. And if you're a go-for-broke kind of guy, they got four cracks at it. And they got a pretty good team to do it with. You think maybe now is the time for a little play action, throw the ball, first down? I do. I wouldn't be surprised. Keep in mind, against Pittsburgh, this is the same team on fourth and goal to go at the one through it for a touchdown. So they have been throwing to get the ball in the end zone. First and goal to three. Waldridge, somebody got there quick. Craig Swope is in there. Great penetration coming from the offside. You'll see an outside man made the tackle. African Grant comes back in for Illinois. Coming out as Jerry Here we Lynch. see it again now. Catch that number. Number 12, Craig Swope, maybe the surest tackler on the team, coming from his safety spot. Second down and three, and now Ohio State, they want to talk about it. Jim Carsado is now talking with Earl Bruce and the gang, and really we've seen a, a major philosophy change with this team as opposed to some other years. It, it's more finesse football right now than it is power football. You know, the funny thing about, about the Buckeyes, Earl Bruce has had great luck there. He's been the winningest coach in the Big Ten since he's arrived six, seven years ago. He's every, every other year he seems to win a title, but I can remember that they wanted to root him out of town. They lost three home games, I guess, in 81. They're going to string him up. He's been under pressure every year. They've, uh, When you look at his record from high school on, he's had a tremendous record, but yeah, that's Ohio State, though. They're used to winning all the time. Well, it's second down to three. Let's see if Earl Bruce sent in our play action pass here. Could be. Of course, they didn't come out with it on the, on the first play. We expected it, but I've been wrong most of the time. <laughs> They're saving it here. 12.21 to go in this second quarter. Illini on top, 14-0. This is the deepest penetration so far this game for the Buckeyes. That is Carter in motion. That is Woolridge. He's not going to be there. A flag on the play. Swope on the tackle. And it looks like it might be against Illini just from the disgusted look of Jim Blondell. I believe what they're going to call is grabbing the face mask. Here we see it. they came with the option again. This time it was pitched out to Woolridge. Well, it's a foot race right now with Craig Swope and Woolridge. Swope makes the, finishes the race, but he grabbed the face mask. You can see it. It's going to be a penalty against Illinois. That's a tough call. But if there's good news in the fact that they can't penalize Illini very much at this point. See where they're going to spot it. It'll be half the distance to the goal. There it is. There's the ruling, grabbing the face mask. The penalty against the Illini for face mask. 
So what was a great play by Craig Swope turned into a penalty, and it's now second down. On the one and a half yard line. Waldridge, no go. Oh, great stop by Mark Taggart. One on one right there in the hall, and Taggart stopped him. I tell you what, that is just power football. Well, that's what you want in a, a middle linebacker. When you make the hit, the back does not go far. Now watch it right there. You'll see 54 Taggart. Look at that stop. Oh, uh, that's a great goal line tackle. He also went over top of the fullback to get there, too. Taggart is a top tackler for the Illini this season. Coming in, he had 20 tackles. 20 solos, 26 total. All the fans want to see a defensive stance. Let's see what happens. It's third and one. Touchdown, Ohio State, I believe, but I'm not sure. Well, Bob Sebring doesn't think it was. And the officials are not calling it. I think when he went up and over, the wrong side got up and over. I believe that's right. Here we'll see it. George Cooper going up, diving, but you'll see the somersault. The ball does not cross the plane of the goal line. What a stop, and boy, George Cooper is now down. Boy, he got hit and got hit hard. Cooper has been injury prone this season. They had to take him out of the Colorado game for a while. But he's coming off his best game. He had 70 yards against Washington State last week rushing. That's his best ever. Boy, you hate to see this, don't you? Well, I hate to see anybody laying down on the ground with an injury. Alex Gibson made that stop. So the defense, like the offense, has a whole cast of heroes right now. Taggart on the great stop. Blondell had a stop before that. And then a good job by Alex Gibson. So you talk about a team playing both ends of the football. We've got one so far. What a boost this would be for the Illini if they stop him here. You're only about six inches away from the goal line. It's going to take a tremendous effort. This Ohio State team has a fine offensive line. They're going to be hard to keep out of that end zone. Cooper's one of the few people on this Buckeye ball club that didn't come from Ohio. What I'm doing, I'm looking for number 10 right now, which is Rich Spangler, their place kicker, and I don't see him in there. I see number 16, Jim Grisadis, as you do. They're going to go for it. Fourth and one on the one. This is it right here. Quarterback sneak. Touchdown. A great effort by the Illini defense, but... It's six points for Ohio State. Carsotis just went over the top, managed to get that ball over the plane of the goal line, and they have six. Here we'll see it. Good surge by the defensive line, but Carsotis just goes up on top. By the time the linebackers come in, he has crossed the goal line. That's Carsotis' second touchdown on the campaign. Both have been rushing. That would be obvious, wouldn't it? It's hard to throw to yourself as a rule. <laughs> Rick Spangler to attempt the point after. He's a good one. Well, it's up and it's good. And now Ohio State has come back within seven. Jack Trudeau has not gone to his wide receivers deep yet this game. He's dropping straight back. Nice pass over the middle to Ray Wilson. Wilson up to almost midfield. The Illini looking sharp still. Again, a little control pattern. Ray Wilson coming out of the backfield. Makes a little turn in about six yards down the field, but a good run after that. You'll see it here. Jack dropping back, looking to the left. Now going to Wilson. There, a little turn in. Now watch it. No linebacker around him at all. Good run now from here. There's Byron Lee trying to make the tackle. He does, but a good gain by the Illini. Right now, Trudeau is 9-7 unofficially. Almost 100 yards for him. Ray Wilson's stats are looking a lot better for the year so far after this game. He's had a good first half so far. Just not much room for Thomas Rooks. Thomas looking for that first down. He turned it up, lowered his shoulder, got close. But I like that kind of attitude. When you're going for, you know, it's close to the first down, that's the number one importance. Thomas Get the first the down. Carrier, the tackle made by 36, Chris Fieldman, 
This is pretty tough call. Either in a way, third and short, your, your temptation is to maybe uh, try to be cute but it, at midfield. But it's real short. You know, you have about uh, less than a yard, so that's not, you don't mind those. By the way, Williams is out. Boatwright is in as a wide receiver. And it's another quarterback keeper. So Jack Trudeau is one or two for two now in the quarterback sneak department for first downs. Well, the way the Ohio State defense was lined up, you're almost giving uh, the quarterback a yard if he wants it. So it was a good call. First down, this is an amazing Jack stat Trudeau right here, Jim. Let's see it right here, Will. You'll see it now. Little quarterback sneak, but you saw that gap right there. You could easily pick up the first down. Illinois has had six third down situations. They've converted five times. Coming into this game, they were only about 25% conversions. That's amazing, isn't it? Much better game. Trudeau, he's going deep. Got Williams. No, it's Pierce. What, what a catch. catch. What a catch by Stephen Pierce. He was bumped, too. A flag was thrown, but what a catch. William White was on him step for step. He was bumped before the reception. We had talked about the fact that it almost appeared that they were setting it up, and there it was. There was, you'll see it here, straight drop back. Even though Jack's looking right now, he's going to Pierce all the way. Ball is lofted high, hoping that Pierce can run under. Now watch this catch, folks. It is a fine one. Look at that jump as he was bumped, and he hung onto the ball. Way to go, Stephen Pierce. Bob Gamble, the offensive coordinator, said there had to be somebody to go with Wilson, so they just couldn't center on Wilson. And he said, Pierce just came forth, and that's the guy that's helped everything. Great concentration on the football. First and goal to go to the five-yard line. Illinois is leading right now, 14-0. Jack Trudeau is going to do some rearranging here. He's looking for Wilson in the end zone, overthrows it. That was scary, three on one coverage. It was like the secondary of Ohio State and then David Will uh, Williams. There are going Williams again all the way, but Jack wisely threw the ball away. You'll notice the jump on the left side now, folks. If an offensive lineman would have done that, it would have been a five yard penalty, but that was the tight end, Anthony Williams. Now, Ohio State, if they reacted to that movement, they could have had called an offside play, offside penalty, but they didn't. They allowed Williams to get back onto his stance, and Jack threw the ball away. Second down. Ball's rolling around because of all the wind. The scoreboard's calling it second down and five. Actually, it's almost second down and six. It's a real, it's a short six, but pretty close to six. backs right now Keith Jones and Ray Ray Wilson that's Wilson no that's Jones He's throwing it intercepted Terry White was there it's a great reception for him for us it's an interception well they try to fool the Ohio State Buckeyes with a passing play, a sweep action by Keith Jones, and he decides to throw the ball. Now the halfback has to make sure the guy is wide open or turn it up and run with it. And I think that's what happens sometimes when you're a sophomore. You just learn. You learn by doing. But a big break for Ohio State. They could have looking at could have been looking at some disaster, but they come away from it with only a seven-point deficit. It's first and ten. The ball now, the Illini 20. That's the first turnover for the Illini so far this afternoon. 8-12 to go in the half. Cursados. That's Taggart. Can't hang on. It might be a fumble. Oh, incomplete pass. Well, Taggart never had control of the ball. As he tried to turn up, he just bobbled it. He'll go as an incompletion. And Tone Ivy on the stop. It's hard to uh, kind of rock one away from Taggart. Here we'll see it. This Wago play fake the pitch. Carsotis now rolling to the right side. He's under pressure now by Scott Davis, but he waits. He see Taggart breaking open. Ball certainly should have been caught. You'll see that he did not have control of it. Good call by the official. Second down 10. Jim Carsotis. Quarterback has done quite a job for the Buckeyes. Look at that time. Great defensive play that time by African Grant because Carter, Chris Carter from Ohio State was wide open and he was waiting. 
African Grant went for the pickoff. Ball just off his fingertips, but again, Carsota's had a lot of time to throw the ball. We'll see it now. A little play action now to Woolridge coming through now. Look at the time. One, two, three. Got all kinds of time. Looking for Carter now. And you'll see Grant coming into the picture right in front, off their fingertips, incompletion. Big time play. By the way, Carsados, who you mentioned coming into this game, was 60-some percent better, 67 percent completion. There you see a two of seven, not his best start. But despite that, the Buckeyes are only down by seven. This time he waited, and this time there was nobody to take it away from him. Chris Carter brings it in, and the Buckeyes are marching downfield. They've come up with the big plays on third down, and frankly, that ball was not thrown very well. We'll see it here. It's a wobbly ball. Play action again. Now watch the flight of the ball. It really gets wobbly. It's not <laughs> thrown real well, but it's effective. It's a completion. Well, African Grant was number 24 there. He just didn't get there in time this go around. Chris Carter, he is their best receiver. He's got good numbers already for the first half. First down and 10 for the Buckeyes. Woolridge. Got some radar up the middle. He picks up nine. Good hole for John Woolridge in a good cut back to the inside. We'll see that left side of the line. There's cut back right there. Now watch him break to the right. He breaks one tackle. Good run by John Woolridge. Second down and one. The ball at the 46 in Buckeye territory as Woolridge will take a breather. Consistent. His last two games, he's been good for over 100 yards. He's just a real steady performer. Good time to throw the ball here now, Will. Workman's a man in motion. That's right up the middle. And that'll be a first down for Ohio State. Mark Taggart makes a stop for the hometown Illini. Cooper on the carry. They don't, they don't use Cooper a lot, but just those effective short yardage downs. It's funny, you know, he's 238 and 62. He doesn't look that tall. He doesn't look that tall. 634 to go in the half. First and 10 now for the Bucks. To the 39-yard line in Illinois territory. Again, it's Cooper. About to the 35-yard line. Cooper right now has carried the ball a total of five times for 22 yards. Now that's the kind of Ohio State football we've seen in the past. You give it to the fullback, now the tailback, and again to the fullback. Ohio State has always had big, strong fullbacks, and here George Cooper is another one in that line of good ones. Ed White comes in for Illinois. African Grant will take some breather. Second down, six. The weather here this morning was not very good. Yesterday was worse. It is gorgeous here at Memorial Stadium in Champaign right now. In motion, Workman. Carter, that's a lateral. The halfback pass. Lanise, out of bounds. Good coverage by Ed White. He was all over Lanise. But you'll see that that was not a pass. It was a lateral. Workman was behind the quarterback. Well, it seems like Ohio State is not the only one who has a few tricks up their sleeve. Well, well we've seen a lot of different ones. You know, we've seen reverses, halfback passes, one by Ohio State, one by Illinois. They're not holding anything back. Third down and six. Right now, Ohio State is four out of six and converting third downs. Woldridge, no, it's Workman. Look out. He's got a lot of room. He's got six. Vince Workman has brought Ohio State within a single point. Well, they really crossed up the Illini defense. I think they were looking for a pass, handoff to the tailback being led through by George Cooper. Watch this, big hole here, and there's no one in the secondary. Ed White coming in the picture, Swope coming in, but not good. After this, it's all she wrote. It's a foot race now, and Workman wins. This almost reminds you of a game like whoever has the ball last wins. Could be that way. 
There you see it there, another homegrown. Belmont, Ohio is basically Columbus, homegrown. That's their third team tailback with Byers out. Spangler ties this game up. So at 5.33 to go before the halftime break, it was Illinois picking up 14 points. Ohio State has complimented him with 14 more, and we're right back where we started. In the final few minutes of the first half, there was no further scoring. So at the end of the first half, the score was Illinois 14 and Ohio State 14. Teams that we would have seen a year ago, 14-14. It really started out with a lot of fireworks. So the first four series were three touchdowns. The second quarter slowed down. Any key play, of course, in that first half was the interception by Keith Jones threw it on a halfback pass. The momentum really switched back to Ohio State. And now we got a tie ball game. Second half is a new one. So let's go. A 14-14 halftime tie between Illinois and the Ohio State Buckeyes, the visitors. And statistically, basically, as teams, except for the fact that Illinois ran more and, or passed for more, and Ohio State ran for more, Jim, it looks like a 14-14 tie. Well, when you look at the total net yardage, 209 to 201, of course, that says it's an even ball game, which it is. Again, the key play, though, is we show one interception, and that is the key. You know, the amazing thing about the passing statistics for Ohio State, while Jack Trudeau was using a handful of receivers, five to be exact, uh, Jim Carsado used one, and that's Chris Carter. We'll be right back with the, with the second half just underway. Illinois cannot move the ball. As we pick it up, the Buckeyes have it for the first time in the second half. Jim Carsado at midfield. Trying to break this 14-14 tie. That's Workman again. Just Workman has been a busy guy. Just good, solid, hard running by Workman. Really not much of a hole, but he made the best of it. On the tackle for the Illini. Are you somewhat surprised that we've seen Vince Workman so much and so little of John Woolridge? Well, we'll see Workman right here now. Hand off to the tailback. Slips one tackle. Good blocking up front. Look at they're just pushing the Illini back. Good effort by Workman. The gain was six at second down and four at the 43-yard line in an Illinois territory. Cooper up the middle. Guy Tiefenteller makes a stop for Illinois. And Cooper is enjoying a pretty good afternoon. He's up to 38 yards. Correction, 33 yards and seven carries. And that's a real good average for a fullback, the way they run the football inside. Straight dive plays to the fullback. 4.4 average is a good one. Well, it's first down and 10. A nice shot from our end zone camera. A good look at the Ohio State offense. That's what Craig Swope sees when it all unveils like that. A workman again gets the call. A little different perspective when you see it from the end zone. You get those line splits and you get kind of get the feel that what the running back looks at when he's making those cuts. Sebring is back in. James Finch comes out for the Illinois defense. Second down and 10, the ball at the 38-yard line. You know, we talked about this revitalized Ohio State passing game, and it's been almost like the old Ohio State in the last two quarters for sure. Nice job by Carter on the reception. He had to step, and there wasn't much uh, gleam he could do. Once again, they're going to the main man in the passing game, Chris Carter. Casota's dropping back, and I believe he's looking to Carter all the way. Look, it never switches eyes any place. There's Carter on an out pattern. African Grant too far off him and Gleamy coming in. Now when you say, Jim, they went to their main man, statistically that's true overall, but today it's an exact truth. He's been the only receiver so far in this game. He has all four for Sados receptions. Workman gets tripped up. Good penetration that time by Curtis Clark from his left defensive end position. 42, the ball carrier. On the stop for the Illinois defense, number 92. Now it's going to be second down. Second down and long, not much of a game. They may give him one on that. They do. They give him a yard, make it second down and nine. Ball resting. Now the 23-yard line in Illinois territory. Kind of a critical time here for the Illini because you can see Ohio State has kept the ball on the ground, so I think they probably have to tell themselves these guys may throw the football still. 
Los Santos. Got time. He's got Carter open. What a catch. Two good plays there. One by Corsades to avoid an unrushing lineman. Got the ball up and a fine catch by Chris Carter. We'll see it here. There's the avoidance of the tackle. That's Tifa Tiller coming in. Casadas runs out of the pocket, gets that ball up in the air, and pretty good defense, but that's just a fine catch by Carter. Pretty well covered by Harkey. That's a third touchdown pass for Carter in terms of receiving it this season, and that has been the receiving statistics and the passing stats for Ohio State. Every completion has been to Chris Carter so far this afternoon. Seventh touchdown pass this season for Casados. Spangler's kick is pretty true. And with 9.43 to go in this third quarter, the tie has been broken. And all of a sudden, Ohio State has put 21 unanswered points on the board. Illinois football will continue in a moment. Illinois took the Ohio State kickoff but failed to make a first down, forcing Illinois to punt to the Buckeyes. It's on the 45 in Illini territory. And again, the Buckeyes keep it on the ground. I think their, their game plan now in the second half is we'll run the ball when we need it. We'll find Chris Carter open. And that has been what's happened in the second half. A new running back for Ohio State is number 28, Roman Bates. The senior out of Memphis, Tennessee. Rosados has time, has Carter, and it's in bounds. Let me ask you, Jim, how can one man be open all day long? Well, we're going, we're staying with a man-to-man -man defense, and frankly, he's just beating the cornerback time after time. And oftentimes, when you, you'll see Carter's statistics right now, six receptions, 125 yards. And that is all the receptions Ohio State has had in this ballgame. All six to Chris Carter. And it's first and 10 of the 25-yard line. That's Spangler getting ready in case he's caught on. He's four out of five this season is a three-pointer. The sun is shining in Champaign. Workman just won't go down. That swope finally brings him down. It's amazing, Jim. We've not seen Johnny Woldridge at all. We've seen Vince Workman carry the load of tailback. And then a freshman, Bates, has come in to breathe Workman, which tells me something might be wrong with Woldridge. We have heard no report about any injury to Woldridge, but again, the replacements for their injured players have been doing a good job. Keith Myers, okay, well, of course, not being in the ball game at all. Woldridge comes in and does a good job, and now Workman. So back in is Chris Carter, also coming back into the game for the Buckeyes as they're tight in that tagger number 80. He had seven catches a week ago, and as Jim told you, nobody except Carter has caught a ball today for Ohio State. And they're going to Carter again. What a catch, and it's another six-pointer. It looked like Jackie Johnson just right out got beat. Well, that's what's happened on every occasion. Again, though, the cornerback is all by himself. You'll see no coverage underneath to help him. And when you give Workman this kind of time, Jackie Johnson didn't have bad coverage. The ball was well thrown, and Carter came up with another great catch. There you see it. All seven receptions go to one man for the whole Ohio State passing attack. And for Carter, that's his second touchdown this half. And the Buckeyes have now scored 27 unanswered points, looking for their 28th. Lanise to hold, Spangler to kick, and it's now all of a sudden a 28 to 14 football game. And Jim, what do you say to your football team now? Well, say your offense, you got to put some points on the board. Obviously, ever since the fourth, the first quarter, it's been all Ohio State. Six plays in that drive, and so far the Ohio State offense not even been faced with a third down situation. It's no time to panic yet. I mean, we got plenty of time in this football game. 4:52 left in the third quarter. Illinois just has to score. 
But give credit to Ohio State. They've come out ready to play. Have you seen any major adjustments, Jim, on either side? You look at this graphic right now, Ohio State with 169 yards rushing, but where they beat the Illini, the passing game has really come back in the second half. 147 now to 153. And give it all to Chris Carter, seven receptions. Just moments ago, but halftime, those total offensive stats were pretty even. You asked about adjustments. No, I've not seen any adjustments, especially defensively for Illinois, and certainly there ought to be. Chris Carter is beating our cornerbacks time after time, but I have not seen where they've gotten any help from anybody else. There comes a time when you got to say, hey, we got to double cover this guy. We're in the third quarter. It's 4.52 to go in this third period of play, and it's now 28-14. This time, Keith Jones just watches it go out of the ballpark, if you will. First and 10, Illinois at the 20. Well, let's analyze it here. We've had good passing. We've had good rotations. Look at that Ohio State. Six plays, 66 yards. Didn't take much time, as usual. And again, it's a pass from Carsado to Carter. What guys are making it look easy right now? Well, they've done a heck of a job. Those two series, they've marched the ball down the field. But again, let's go. Chris Carter, he's the guy that's really been damaging to Illinois. Jack Trudeau having his best day of the year brings him out. Needs to get his team on the move here. In the air. Pierce. Good percentage pass. Moves up to about the 26-yard line. A gain of about six. That play is a little slant stop pattern to Stephen Pierce. We'll see it now. You'll see Pierce coming in on a little slant. There he is. And that play has been open all day. Stick with it until they take it away from you. At the third time, Pierce has brought in a reception. He's got three catches for 63 yards. Wilson, I think, got Ray about Wilson, three number before he needed. As Kolick makes a stop for Ohio State. Larry Kolick. Good penetration by Larry Kolick tripped up Ray Wilson, and you could see him shaking off his knee. It looked like he took a bang on it. It's going to be third down right now, and a long two. Clock running at 3.55 to go in this third quarter. One back and a lot of wide receivers for Illinois right now. 30-yard line's the magic line. It's a first down. Good halfback pass to Ray Wilson. Or I should say a good pass to the halfback, Ray Wilson. Simple, clean, smooth, first and 10. It's a little five-yard stop pattern by Ray Wilson. He saw Jack sees the cornerback off. That ball's there right on the numbers, and they got the first down. It's the first time in four tries, Yelena have picked up a third down conversion today. Hunter Doe is going to go there again. Williams connects to the 48. William White makes a stop that time. When you see a couple nice passes like that, you always wonder why can't you do that all the time. Well, of course, the defense dictates what you can do. Now, Jack is looking to Williams now. It's a long out pattern. Right there on the numbers. Good throw because Jack had to get over number 47 who had the underneath coverage. Jack Trudeau. Whoa, nice reception that time by Cap Bozo. Up to about midfield as Terry White was right there with him. Well, that was a read of a blitz. Both Cap and Jack read the blitz well. The ball was right there. Now, Cap Bozo has been one of the surprises offensively, I think, for Illinois. By the way, before I forget, that last reception by Williams moved him to sixth on the all-time NCAA list as his pursuit of Howard Twilley continues. Trudeau. Again, the short percentage pass, this time to Eric Wyckoff. And this time, it's Pepper Johnson who makes the stop. The Illini are getting smart. The Ohio State has taken the deep things away. Now, you'll, you'll, right here, it's just, again, a stop pattern now to, to Wyckoff, who's in a slot position. Ball's right there. So is the tackler. And it's a, it's a good gain, though, of eight yards. The Illini are getting their passing attempt going, but look at Ohio State catching up in yardage. That means they're doing something right, reflect, which reflects in our score. Trudeau pumps to Rooks, still looking. 
Yeah, he winds up with the Rooks anyway, I think. Well, we got a flag on the play, and that could be a lineman downfield. It doesn't look good for this conversation. And 98, Thomas Johnson. Let's see what the boss says here. How about that, sports fans? Holding against Ohio State. Well, there's somebody that likes that call, you think? I'd say there's about 70,000 fans there that like that call. When all this conversation goes on between the players and the referee, what's that like, Jim? What, what, what really is being said down there? Well, your heart starts beating, hoping that it's a going against your opponent. <laughs> Jack Trudeau is pushing 200 yards passing right now. You'll see Thomas Rooks there now. Five carries, 29 yards. It's first and ten. The ball's on the 35-yard line. As Trudeau brings him out, he's six for six in his last six attempts. The guy's in a roll. And now the Illinois team is moving with him. There's that channel pass to Rooks. Still works. That's seven for seven. As Ray Jackson makes a stop for Ohio State. Well, I think they're about 50% on this shuttle pass. It didn't work very well twice. This time it does. Little pass to Thomas Rooks, and it's the ball carrier's job after that to pick up the yardage. Anthony Williams in a tight end now for Illinois. Ray Wilson comes back in. Second down and three. Wilson, I think he's got it and then some. Good job by Ray Wilson of finding the hole, and once he knew he was going to get hit, he lowered his shoulder, picked up two extra. Here we see it now. Scott Keyhole has a key block, number 56. He turns up through the hole, makes the block there, allows Wilson to make the cut and get the first down. Wilson, nine carries so far for about 26 yards, and that is a fourth first down in this, this drive for Illinois. Trudeau. Well, Anthony Williams is there, but it was just a little bit out of his reach. That's a timing pass between the tight end and the quarterback. Tight end has to read his man and turn inside or outside, and the quarterback has to see the same read. That stops the clock in a minute two to go in his third period of play. And that's the first incompletion after seven straight strikes for Trudeau, so his batting average per se is pretty good this afternoon. He's got him spread everywhere on second down. What a gutsy throw into the Ohio State coverage. Steve Pierce makes the catch. William White makes the stop. Well, that was a nice look from up here. That's a real pretty play. You got Pierce crossing over the middle. Here's Jack Tra Trudell dropping back now. He's looking to Pierce crossing over the middle. Ball is right there, rifled in right on the numbers. Pretty well covered by Willie Williams, number 37. Jack Trudeau with 45 seconds to go in the quarter, trying to march him in at first and eight. Wilson, real close, real close, down to inside the one. Black running at 32 seconds in this third period of play. Give credit to the offensive line. You'll see some good blocking right here. Hand off to the tailback. Ray Wilson gets through that hole, reaches out, not quite enough, just short of the touchdown. 13 seconds left on the game clock. They may or may not get this one off. Eight seconds, it's running. They're on the one foot line. Illinois could use six in a big hurry. It's six. Ray Wilson. Good blocking up front once again. Here we say Ray decides to go up top. He could have gone either way. Good blocking. He's into the end zone by three yards. Ray Wilson, who's seeing a lot of activity because Eric Wyckoff was hurt in practice, comes through. 
So Wilson is by far having his busy day as an Illini as Chris White is in to make a three strike today in the extra point category. We should also mention during that touchdown drive, Jack Trudeau has passed Tony Eason in passing attempts for a career at Illinois. It seems like forever to get the snap back. Chris White's kick is up. He's through again. So we're now at 28-21 football game with a second to go in the third quarter. So we'll have one more play before this quarter ends. Well, you would think it wasn't a home timekeeper with one second left. <laughs> in days past, that one second would have gone off the clock, and Illinois then would have kicked with the win. Now they have to kick off. I don't think. Except for over here and down the road and up there. 28-21. By the way, while we have a second here, we should mention that this is a 4-H. The 4-H clubs of Illinois and the pork producers of Illinois are being saluted today here at Memorial Stadium. Of course, the pork producers provide us all with free food throughout the season, and it's awfully good. They do a wonderful job. One second remaining now, and all of a sudden Illinois is got back within striking range. 80 yards, 12 plays, about five minutes. And again, Illinois puts together a nice combination, and again, it works. But they went back to that short passing game. You saw the longest pass was about 12 yards down the Ohio State is giving them the short stuff and then the series, Illinois took it. Everett Ross, one of the deep backs. Chris White prepares to kick off. And the other is Vince Workman. Ross, 48, one of one of a handful of great freshmen for Ohio State. Still going, and that's where this third quarter comes to a conclusion. And that's the end of the third quarter with the score. Ohio State 28 and Illinois 21. Before we begin the fourth period of play to Illinois. To no. To Rooks again. About the 42. Three yards and a cloud of... Oof. <laughs> Once again, Ohio State is taking away everything deep. Jack is looking for a receiver. He can't find one now. Good coverage by Ohio State. He goes to the safety valve. Thomas Rooks on a little flare. Picks up a few yards. That's the eighth reception today for Rooks for 41 yards. Third down. And Pat Bozo has it. And it's an Illini first down. That ball was really rifled by Jack Trudeau. Cap Bozo on a little turn-in pattern. There were three white jerseys here. Around him. We'll see it now. Jack looking and looking. Looks now to Bozo. Rifles the ball right there in the number. Look at all the white jerseys. These two white jerseys around. Good throw, good catch, and a first down. Spielman and White, two good ones. Nice numbers for Bozo today. Trudeau, the shuttle pass again. It's Rooks again. To about the 44 yard line. What's that saying about? Staying with what works. It ain't broke, don't fix it either. Little different look on that shuttle pass. The last few times they've ran it, they've seen a little sprint out. Now, you'll see Jack on a straight drop back this time on the shuttle. In previous times, they had a sprint out action. That's the eighth reception for Rooks today. 28-21, there it is. Illini marching in to try to tie it up. On second and four. Let's see how close they got. You just joined us in the first quarter. Illinois scored two touchdowns, led 14 nothing. In the second quarter, Ohio State tied it up, and that was our halftime score. And then after that, Ohio State kept scoring. Two more touchdowns, and finally Illinois in the 
the very end of the third quarter, got back within seven. That brings you up to date with 9-10 to go in this football game. It is third down and one. Yep. No sense explaining that one. It's going to be third down and six now. That's poise, gentlemen. you got to have poise in those key situations. In line, I didn't show any. The line jumps off sides, and instead of a third and a long one, you're going to have third and a long six, and it's certainly a passing situation. Well, so far, in the last three third down situations, Trudeau has found somebody for conversions via the air. But now we're there. It's good hunch it's going to be in the air. Clock still running now at 8.55. So you have Pearson, you have Carter out, you have Wilson split, and you have Keith Jones, the only back. Pierce! I tell you what, Jack Trudeau is on the money today. Sonny Gordon makes the stop for Ohio State. Pierce isn't doing bad with five receptions. Jack now looking towards Pierce. Wide open over the center of the field. Look, now the safety's coming up, makes the hit. That's Sonny Gordon, but gave him too much room, and it was a big, big first down for Illinois. The ball resting just shy of the Ohio State 30. The blitz is on. It's in the air. Good effort that time by Ray Wilson. What caused that incompletion was the blitz, and someone from Illinois did not pick it up. Jack had a throw off his back foot. He just threw it up in the air. Thank God it wasn't an interception. Probably three weeks ago it would have been the way things were going that day. Second down, 10. Clock stops at 8-19. Illinois needs seven to tie it at 20 at all. They're now down 28-21. You can say what you want about all the games that preceded this, but this is the game that begins at trip to Pasadena. This is the important one, the second season, if you will. Wyckoff can't turn the corner. What a great play by Chris Spielman. Toss sweep, Spielman read it well, took an inside position, made the tackle. Here we see it. That's Wyckoff going for the outside. You'll see 36, Spielman make the tackle there. And it wasn't for Spielman, it was a good block ahead of Wyckoff. Third down and nine. I think we're working on a nail biter here, Jim. Jack Trudeau is having a good day in Champaign. Pierce, it's inside the 10. Pierce is certainly having a big, big day in those key situations. He's coming up with the catches. Again, Jack now looks right, comes back to the left side for Pierce. It's a slant, it's a post pattern right there on the numbers. Good grab, good, big first down for Illinois. Pierce coming into this game only had caught 70 yards with the passes. That's today's figures. He's having a season today. First and 10. Illinois looking all of their preseason press indicated they would. Look at this. Ray Wilson. They came back with that toss sweep. Ray Wilson took the inside and looked like he had it just tripped up now look here's the toss wilson turns it back up inside you will see him coming through he sees the goal line number 12 terry white makes the initial hit just short of a touchdown clock running at 652 to go in this game illinois got to get it in down here there's no doubt about it second down a yard to go it's Wilson. Boy, that looks like he looks like a touchdown, but the officials aren't indicating it is. Ray Wilson, 21, the ball carrier. Stop, it's going to be third down, Jim. And there's the meeting of the mind. A discussion. Baseball this afternoon. And the That's Larry Horton, the backfield Horton coach, talking to Mike White. What's the play, run. folks? You can't be much 
short of a touchdown and not be there. It's it's just inches away. Well, the key here is they're going to bring in the chains, and now if it's a first down, you got four cracks to go a foot. Wouldn't that be a nice luxury? Bingo. That's it. Four tries, one foot. I tell you what, number 98 looking on there. Pepper Johnson's probably got to be saying, you got to be kidding. <laughs> you want us to stop these guys four times? First goal, Illini, ball just inches away from the goal line. Quarterback sneak, what do you think? I'd go with it. No penalties now. Yeah, just simple power would be fine. There it is. Touchdown! The Illini are within a point. And you can hear it, the fans here love it. Coming back from a 14-point deficit, Illinois is a point away from tying the ball game. Jack Trudeau. Hey, look at that. Go ahead, buddy. It's about time you have some fun playing this game this year. We see it on the replay. Simple quarterback sneak, good blocking up front. Jack finds the opening, and we have six points. We call a mean game, don't we? First and a foot. We'll get it in Chris White. Into attempt to point after. He's about as sure as they come. Got a tie game. The kick is good. And we, got, and we have 6.09 to go in this football contest. Illinois football continues after these local messages. Ohio State failed to move the ball and again had to punt it back to Illinois. Thus, the stage was set for the Illini's last chance to win its Big Ten opener. Pierce! Boy, is that pretty. First down. You talk about throwing in a crowd. Stephen Pierce comes up with another big reception. And picking on Sonny Gordon like they did, he's one of their best defensive backs. We talked about the center field being open. Jack is looking to Pierce. Now watch this grab. High in the air goes Pierce. Hit right as he catches the ball. Good job of hanging on. It's a first down. Pierce has now received 131 yards of passing. Seven receptions. Look at that average. He's got to be saying, hey, this Big Ten's fun. Ball's on the 35-yard line. Trudeau, short pass to Wilson, to the 30. Pepper Johnson makes the stop. One of the keys now is no mistakes for the Illini. They can move the ball down with these short patterns. We are getting very close, and we may be in range of Wilson, uh, Chris White now, but you certainly want to move the ball further down the field. Clock running at 147. Like I said, both teams have other timeouts left. It is second down and five. Anything around the 25-yard line is a first down. Wilson, not going to get there this time. Ray Wilson, the carrier. Johnson on the stop for Ohio State. Clock still running at 1:30. Thomas Johnson. Well, watch Wilson now get the hand up. You'll see he's grabbing with both hands. Both hands on the football. He does not want to fumble. Good tackle there by Thomas Pepper Johnson. Clock still running at 112. Third down and two. The ball's on the 27-yard line. Brooks and Wilson, the running backs. That's Wilson. Whoa, but he's got a first down. He's been the flyer today about the third or fourth time he's gone into the air to get the first down, and Illinois is getting closer. First down will stop the clock at 59 seconds. Pitch out to Ray Wilson again. Eyes on the first down area, up into the air. Good flip will give him about a seven and a half on that form, but a first down. In a rough landing. Jack Trudeau operating with 59 seconds to go. He's going for the win. Overthrows everybody. Wilson was the man down there. And I think he wisely overthrew them all. Ray Wilson, number 21. The, the strategy receiver. there is go for the bomb, make sure it's long enough, hope for no interception, get seven. 41 seconds now, the, the clock has stopped. 
Well, about everything Illinois has done has worked, but now I think you almost have to really kind of lay out a plan here. Minimal time, all your timeouts left, and you have an arsenal of weapons. Not going long or deep except for the last fly pattern. Just short patterns and moving it down the field. Jack Trudeau looking like the jack of old, second down and 10. Not much there with Eric Wyckoff. Clock running at 35 seconds. Still running, nobody's called a timeout yet. Chris White is limbering on the sidelines. Nobody's called timeout. Finally, I think Trudeau might call a timeout. 23 seconds. Number 20 gonna, now we call timeout. 20 seconds on the clock. 20 seconds on the clock. It is third down and nine. Well, what they may do is try to get one more running play to the left side of the field to get it in the center of the field for Chris to take his attempt at a field goal. Now on the other side of the coin, Ohio State is saying, if they run the ball, let's go for the fumble, try to strip the ball. You'll see it now with only 20 seconds to go in this ball game. Tie score, 28-28. And what a football game we've had. Jim, what do you think the defensive coaches are telling the Ohio State defense there? I think of what I said earlier, that he said, if they're going to go, if they're going to run the football, go for stripping the ball, hope for a fumble. And as you can see from the flag, the win will be at Chris White's back. The flag on Chris White for the year, he is four for five in field goals. He missed one inside 29 yards. He's two for two in that 40 to 49 yard range. So how far out that attempt might be well depends on what happens right now. Well, there's one Ohio State fan here in the uh, audience. You know, Ohio State's in a bad place to be from. State of Ohio is not a bad place to be from. It's a man that came and lived in Cincinnati. Uh, That's right. Well, you know, you have roots. Ohio, though, really has a ton of good football. With Ohio State, UC, Miami University, Ohio University, Toledo. Third down, nine. There's the run you looked for. Jim called it. On the carry was Wilson. Clock's running. Now Jack will wait till the last second to call the timeout. So the field goal is the last play of the ball game. Four seconds, and the clock is stopped. This is the ball game, right here. Man, oh man, what a pressure situation for Chris White. Chris has been here before. He's an excellent kicker. He's four for five so far this year in field goals. He is the man of the hour. You play 60 minutes of football, a lot of heads being knocked around, and it gets down to this. You think he's a lonely man out there. The Illinois team is huddled off to the side. They know what they have to do. Chris standing by himself saying, I've got to make it. Four seconds left in this football game. This is the football game for all intent purposes. Now we'll see if maybe Ohio State will call a timeout. This is called icing the shooter, huh? You got it. Let me ask you this. Why would Chris be all by himself and the rest of the team way over there? Well, they do this all the time. Just had Chris get a line up, get it mentally pictured in his mind where the ball is going to go. Chris White has been one of the most stable factors in this football team the last handful of years. Mike Giddings is the holder. And don't forget, that's a big part of this, too. And there's a timeout that Jim was telling you about. This is the mental game you see all the time. You see it a lot in baseball, too. Certainly do. You see it in basketball when a guy's making a clutch free throw or attempting to. Ice to shooter, ice to kicker. You know, it's amazing when you... Chris White's probably looking at that going, I've done this in practice hundreds of times. The only thing that's changed is 70,000 people in a football game. I think if I was out there this time, I'd be talking to my maker upstairs saying, dear God, help me make it. <laughs> oh, he's probably getting a lot of signals right now. <laughs> Four seconds left in this football game. It has been a beauty of a Big Ten opener. Both teams have played well. Both teams have had their moments. You really think about the game. Illinois gets out to a 14-point lead. Ohio State comes back to tie it, then go up 14 points. And then Illinois comes back to tie it with a 14-point deficit. What a football game. Well, Glettings will mark it. He has a big part in this combination as well. It's a 38-yard attempt for the win. The snap is back. It's up. 
enough. It's long enough. It's good. What a finish to a great ball game. <laughs> it's all over. No time is left. The game that counted, the Big Ten opener, it's Illinois. And the team that went from one and two to begin the season now is in first place in the standings that count the Big Tens. place to be for Illinois fans as this Illinois club Chris White and his holder Glittings are getting a standing ovation from 70,000 fans with their orange pom-poms what a great win over a phenomenal football team and Ohio State and Illinois have given us again another great performance and you know we came into this thing Jim saying that the last five times these two clubs have met nothing was decided up until the last two and a half minutes this time, we thought we'd ice it up and make it the last four seconds. For, those, for the last six years, Illinois has had great football games against Ohio State, winning only one of the last six, but as you said, losing by less than seven points in all. But it follows in that tradition another great football game. I keep using the word great, but that's the only thing I can think of. What a fine day for Illinois. You feel so happy for these young men who are maligned, knocked down, who played lousy for the last three weeks, but they came back it showed their character. There's the fans who acknowledge a great performance. There was an offensive line who overcame injuries and adjustments. They worked this week without coaches to get the job done. The defense ranked last in the conference, found their way. There's a man who always plays consistently good. Mr. Swope himself. This is the first time they were tested by a good passing team. And finally, it looks like Illinois has come to play and they're taking the ado. It rightfully really is theirs because a lesser group could have folded up the tent. A lot of people were saying that this was the game that could set the tempo for the next eight games, the ones that really count in the conference. Well, if this is the tempo, me and you are going to have a weak heart, and there's going to be a lot of excited Illini fans along the way. Well, it's just a great big win. I gotta tell you what, fans, if you think is or something, wait till we go to West Lafayette next week because Purdue is loaded and that ought to be a dynamite game. But before we put this whole thing to bed, what do you think, Jim? I'm breathless right now. Like I said, this is what Illinois football should be all about. Football in general is all about. 75,000 people saw one heck of a football game out here today and that includes you and I. The bottom line is Illinois had to win the football game to get its self-esteem back. It did that. And it beat an awfully good Ohio State football team. And for the Buckeyes who are trying to defend their championship, well, they're uh, basically, they're basically one win short of what they thought they would be at this point. Today's Ohio State-Illinois game has been brought to you by Budweiser. Reach for that distinctively clean